here goes nothing. So disconnecting the connector, press number five here, and it just been shooting it up into the air. No. Nope. Hey people, welcome back to this Space Engineers survival playthrough. I built this. <laughs> this is one of the automated ice drilling platforms. Um, I built it off camera because it's a fairly simple, straightforward build and I figured it would be easier if I just showed you this actually in place rather than build it with you. Um, because what I'd like to do today is build the remote drone for it, uh, the cargo drone. Because what I'd like to do is get this system tested just to make sure it's working. Um, what I'll quickly do though is show you around this build and show you how it works and set it off. And then we can see it, so bear with me a moment. I'm going to leave that antenna in my hot bar on number five there because I've put it in the wrong place. I need to put, I need to reposition it um, because where it is at the moment, it's going to probably the cargo drone will eventually crash into it. <laughs> oh well. So it's a fairly straightforward build. This um, so what we've got is a single block with an ordinary rotor on top of that, and then the whole system spins around on this rotor and drills down into the into the ice so uh, what i've done is i've gone up one two three four five blocks and stuck a large cargo container on it out of the large cargo container it doesn't matter which end it comes out of um, a couple of conveyor tubes and a conveyor block hanging from that are two pistons and six drills so all the ice will go up the pistons through the, through the conveyor tubes and into the large container um, and I've only drilled a very small bit as I was testing and there's already over four million units of ice in there so as you can see it produces a ton of ice in a very short time the power for this is just one battery two solar panels so very cheap to run and the two solar panels are enough to increase the power in the battery through the daytime. So you use less power than you actually bring in through the daytime. And it leaves plenty of power to, for this to be powered all through the night as well. So it can run pretty much perpetually until the pistons are fully extended. And I'll just show you the bones of the machine. So we've got a remote control and an antenna on this when we build it. And the way it works are three timers. That's these three here. So what I'll do is I'll just go into it and I'll show you how to set the thing up. So very, very easy and cheap build. Um, well, before I do that, I'll just explain this. There's a sorter underneath the connector. So the cargo drone will come in, land on the connector, and connect to that briefly. I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, however long you want it. This conveyor sorter is will be permanently set to draw ice from the large cargo container through the connector. So when the cargo bot does land on it, it will automatically fill with ice as much as possible before it sets off and leaves again. Um, and that's what the conveyor will, will ensure that it does. At the other end, when it lands on a connector, there'll be another sorter pulling ice through the cargo drone. So it will land and be drained. It will land here and be filled. And that's how that will work. Um, so you do need individual connectors for each cargo drone at the other end. They can't share a connector and you wouldn't want them to anyway because they'll end up colliding and crashing. So the three timer blocks control all of this and I'll show you how they're set up. So the pistons, I'll just rename them top and bottom. When they are on, they're just set to the slowest velocity, 0.1, um, and their maximum extension but make sure they're off um, permanently because the timers will turn them on and off when they're needed. So when they're on, they will extend at 0.1 meters per second 
to their full distance if left alone. So controlling all that are the three timers. And I've stopped them all at the moment. So time one, timer, the first timer block, no delay on it, just the standard. And in the setup there, what you have this one do is it starts timer block two. I'll explain timer block two in a moment. It turns on the two pistons and then starts to extend the two pistons. And that's all timer block one does. Timer block two, I've set to a 10 second delay. And the reason I've done that is because pistons at 0.1 meters per second will extend one meter, uh, sorry, will extend 0.1 of a meter every second. So in 10 seconds, the pistons will extend one meter. And I only want the drills to drop by two meters on each loop of these timers, which will become clear when I finish the time to explain the timers. So timer block two has a delay of 10 seconds. So timer block one started timer block two. 10 seconds later, timer block two will stop timer block one, switch off the two pistons, which will stop them extending, and turns on and well or starts timer block three. All timer block three does, it has a delay of three minutes, which is more than enough time for the rotor to complete one full rotation. Um, so it has a delay of three minutes, and after that three minutes is up, it starts timer block one once more. And so that loop continues, timer block one, timer block two, timer block three, timer block one, timer block two, timer block three, and there's a continual loop that goes on. So every three minutes, basically, the pistons extend for 10 seconds or for one meter. The drills are on permanently on, on the left click, the drilling mode. Um, and I'll show you how to set those up in a second. As I say, the rotor is also permanently on. I've got it off at the moment so the thing's not turning. And so what I do with the rotor is set the velocity to 0.4 revolutions per minute. That inch, that's not too fast for the drills to drill and it's the right speed for the three minute timer block three. If you set the velocity lower than 0.4 on the rotor, the drills probably won't complete a full rotation in that three minutes. So the rotor 0.4 meters, uh, 0.4 revolutions per minute. Everything else can remain unchanged. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock those and put it on because the rotor stays on permanently. Now let me just access remotely this and I'll show you how to set the drills up. Control. So first of all, what you do is go in and set your drills up as a group so that you can put them onto your toolbar. So in the toolbar, rather than putting the weapons and tools into your hotbar, if you do it that way, you have to actually physically press left click to have them drill. If you set them up as a group, then put them into your hotbar, you can simply set them as toggle on and off. So I'm going to switch those on and the drills will stay on permanently also. Okay, so drills and rotor permanently stay on, as you can see. And as I say, that, that one battery and two solar panels is more than enough power to to make that happen on a permanent basis. Once you're happy with that, oh, I don't need to go up there, I can do it remotely, can't I? We can access it remotely. And because we have an antenna on it, we will be able to access this from the control tower once that's built. So go into the terminal and then just start timer block one. And what we'll see there is the drills extending, like they are now. They'll only extend for about 10 seconds, or they're glitching into the ground. That happens occasionally, I've noticed that lately, that things glitch through the ground. The restart normally fixes it. Um, yeah, they've stopped extending, so time block, two kicked in, time block 2 kicked in and stopped the um, pistons from extending. 
So if we look at it now, we'll see that time of lot three is now counting down. So there it is. So still two and a half minutes to go for that happens. I'm going to stop the times because we're glitching through the ground there. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring the I'll reset the pistons up to their zero extension and start the whole process again when I want to do that. So let's just stop with those. And you know what? We might as well switch everything off, haven't we? So rotors off. We might as well lock those. Drills off. Let's shut it down. Oh, it looks like it might have fixed itself. Oh no, that's weird. It's it glitched through the ground here until this point, and then started drilling. Very strange. Strange space engineer stuff. Um, speaking of strange space space engineer stuff, I'll show you something in a minute as well, which will probably cause us to have a restart anyway. So that's the drilling platform. Like I said, they're very, very simple to build uh, and to set up and incredibly effective. Whee! Oh! <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be a stunt driver, am I? <laughs> Terrible at driving these backwards. There we go. Come on, come on. There we go. Connect it. Um, yeah, some strange space engineer stuff. This thing, for whatever reason, I mean, I'll try it again now, but for whatever reason, when I try and disconnect Vader from the connector here, it shoots it up into the air about four or five hundred meters and comes crashing down in a snotty heap. So what I'm going to do is take a save. And try it again see if it's fixed itself <laughs> so here goes here goes nothing so disconnecting the connector press number five here and it just been shooting it up into the air no nope. and it hasn't changed it no. And it lands exactly the same way every single time. I must have done this a dozen times now. Lands exactly the same way. Oh, there's actually been very little damage that time. Do you know what? I might just leave it like that this time. Um, turn the gyro up to full and I should be able to flip it over. And recover it. Um, failing that, I could probably push it over with the um, Chewy, the miner. Weird space engineer stuff. I'm going to leave it like that this time. <laughs> we'll find a way. We always do. Right, okay, so what I'd like to do is get on with a build for a cargo drone so that we could test that out. I'm not sure if we're going to have time to set it up today for the, the route with the waypoints etc but um, let's at least get the build done. Let's make sure Bob is off at the moment. I'm going to make sure Bob's off on this one as well. Bob, 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 Bob! Where are you? Bob Rover 1. I haven't thought of a name for the Rover 1, have I? Um, we decided on R1 
on a bit of a Star Wars theme. So R1 for the recon drone, Vader for the large rover, Chewie for the mining vessel. Yeah, we need one for the... What's happened here? Some very strange hap things happening with the voxels in this game today. Um, yeah, I took away this row of blocks that were that was connecting all this together, um, and basically hid it under the ground. So drilled a tunnel all the way through to the bottom of this and, and put that in. I put this connector here because I need somewhere to put stuff into Vader, um, because it will also be a mobile construction vehicle. Um, and because of the way that the conveyor sorters work, I can't add stuff to it from the other end because it's a one-way system. So I needed a connector this side that I could connect Vader up to, so I could transfer components to it. So when we do go out, like for instance, to build these um, defense pillboxes around the perimeter of the base, then I can put stuff into it and take it around. These voxels weren't destroyed when I logged out last. I dug quite a way under the ground here and none of these were damaged. This is really annoying and frustrating. Oh, never mind, let's get on with what we're doing. Oh, I didn't change the position of that aerial, did I? We'll do that. I'll do it. So I'll probably do that off camera. Okay. Oops, missed. You know what, I'm going to have to quickly fill up my hydrogen. Oh no, we'll be alright. We'll be alright. Famous last words. Okay, let's get on with this. Um, let's start off with a cargo container. So we want the big connector to the bottom and the small connectors as they are there. So the connector for this will just sit straight on the bottom and that's how it will connect to the base and to the ice drilling platform we'll stick the reactor we'll call this the back right there um, do you know what I'm going to turn Bob on and get that built so I can put some uranium in the reactor whilst we can still get to it okay back all right um, I'm going to put a decent amount of uranium in these because I want them to fly for a while without breaking down, falling out of the sky. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem. They, they, by the time that uranium runs out, they should have emptied whatever ice drill they're um, assigned to. And then they'll fall out of the sky and then we'll just come down eventually, you know, after 100 episodes and <laughs> collect the debris if it's not running anymore. Okay, so that's really the bones of it. Um, I need a remote control. Uh, timer blocks. I can't remember how many timer blocks I'm going to need, but we'll have to figure that one out. Of course, we're going to need thrusters, an aerial, so we can control it. Um, and I'll grab a camera. Shouldn't be absolutely necessary to camera, but it doesn't hurt to put a camera on a remote control vehicle, does it? Okay, so what do we do now? Let's stick the remote control on. Now, as I said with R1 when we built that, if you're going to automate a remote control vehicle, you need to put the remote directly over the connector or the landing pad it helps it land yeah and I'll just stick two tire blocks on at the moment I, I can't remember how many I need but we'll work that one out seems like a good spot for the aerial right on top of that doesn't it um, so we got two 
that, that. Set the camera on last. Okay, so we've got our power, we've got our cargo box, we've got our connector, we have a remote and our timers, um, and our aerial gyro before I forget. I'm actually going to put two gyros on this because when it's full of ice it might be quite heavy. Let's pop those either side of there, seems to make sense. I've got a rough design in mind for this thing, but it's, you know, a bit trial and error at the moment. Yeah, okay, so we've got all the essentials on, it's just a case of getting thrust around it now, and then it's, it's pretty much finished. So we need decent thrust, upwards thrust, because it will be quite heavy when it comes in for a landing at this end. So... I'm actually going to go or six. Um, when we get the other thrust on, I'll remove <clears throat> that and put the other thruster on. So, yeah, and we definitely need a downwards thrust because it's a remote vehicle. Pop that there. Okay, so we've got up, down, side to side, forward and back. Hmm, maybe should have moved these down one, and then they, I could have put them above it. Oh, that should be right. So, let's go like that. Come on, get on there. We need side to side. Now there should be, it says, enough space. Put it there without damaging that thruster. Oh no, that's going to hit that thruster. I have to go here then, won't it? I'll get four of them on there. Can indeed. Okay. So we've got our down, we've got our up, we've got our forward and reverse, we have our side to side, so that's all the thrust required. Let's take that off. Move those. Stick our last thruster on. Boom. And I think as far as the essentials, that's pretty much it completed. Obviously we need to put the cladding on it, decorate it, make it look nice. But I can do that off camera. Um, speaking of cameras... That seems like a good spot, doesn't it? Boom! Now, I've got to try and get it up there. <laughs> Land it. Do you know what? I think I'm going to put a camera on the bottom of this as well. Just to help land it. Can we get one on the bottom of one of those? Let's see. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, we'll do that. That's going to be useful for when we... I have to set up all the waypoints for this with the, the bottom landing camera is going to be really useful for us lining things up. Yeah. Okay, so let's get a decent angle here. Remote access. Control. Let's rename it first. Um, I called the ice drills ID, so let's call this ID cargo. Zero one, and that will be the cargo drone for ice drills. Ice drill zero one.
Okay. Let's do that. Let's group all the thrusters. The usual stuff. Let's spell it correctly. And actually get in the box to actually do it. Just That's the top camera. That is the bottom camera. Ooh, he said bottom. <laughs> Connector. ID cargo. It's worth naming things like these because when they're connected to bases, it's really difficult to tell them apart which one's which. Okay, worry about those. Reactor. Okay. Remote control. Okay. And definitely worth timer one. There. Now what we need to do first is set up some waypoints for this thing. So let's control it. Why can't I control it? because I am controlling it. Okay. Let's see if we can navigate this over here. Seems like a sensible point to set up the groups, doesn't it? Um, I mean, we're putting these in to manually control them at the moment, but eventually we, we won't need to because it will just be it will be done remotely. Um, what do I need? Cameras. So I want. That one, that's the one I'm after. Okay, so we go forward a bit, don't we? So that looks about lined up. Let's get a bit closer, see what we're doing. Connected up at the moment. So what we need to do <clears throat> is put a waypoint at 
So we'll do similar to we to what we did with R1. We'll do a series of waypoints that will slow the cargo drone down. But these cargo drones are probably only set a maximum speed of like 30 meters a second because they, they're just going across the ice, they're not going far. So that'll be fine. So what we need to do now is we unlike that. Let's take it up to about there. Do another. Um, we'll go there, we'll do another one above that, and then we'll do another waypoint of that. So this will be approach three. If we do three approach waypoints. What we'll do is go up again to about there. That's about 30 or so meters above there. Approach two. Now let's get into the camera. And what I want to do is do an approach that's on a direct path between this and that, but up a bit further. Let's go up to about 200 meters halfway that should do it we'll do another one there so we'll know that approach one is in between those two so what we need to do now get out of that go and get in our control chair because that Ice drill is more than 200 meters away from us, so I can't control the drone more than 200 meters from my suit. So we need to get into the control chair. Boom. Trying to get some kind of angle that we'll be able to see roughly where we're there, when we're there. Okay, let's do that. Let's control our cargo drone. Go to the cameras, camera panning, brilliant. What I want to do is go down to oh, that aerial. I haven't moved that aerial, have I? roughly over the top of it, 50 meters or so above it, that should be pretty good. Let's do what I'm going to do is nip over there. Oh, that's not the door, is it? I need to move that aerial because it is going to be directly in the way. Okay, I've moved the aerial. Let's do this. Um, what I'm going to do first is land then put in another couple of waypoints from that point. Perfect. Okay, let's set a GPS. Okay, so let's disconnect. Go up to about there. Pop another one in. Ready, cargo zero one drill approach three, and we'll do one more approach just a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, GPS, and this should be the final 
one. Grill approach two. Now that should be all of the waypoints that we require. So let's go into the remote. Add all of those. So we'll start off with the connector at the base. Then it was three, two, one, and then finally. that so connector just above the connector about 50 meters above the connector that was halfway point about 200 meters between the two drill approach one was um, about 100 meters above it then about 30 meters then about five meters or thereabouts then connect yeah I think that was right <laughs> We're going to reduce the speed to 30 for this one. And the flight mode will be circle, because we want it to continually do a loop. We want collision avoidance off, because we want them to land, but we want permission, permission, precision mode on. Now we do need to set up some actions for these with the timers as well. Um, because when they land at the, at the connectors, what we need to do is kick in the timers and the timers will switch off the, re the remote for maybe 10 or 15 seconds so that it has time to empty and fill its cargo container. And then when the timer block Finishes the remote will the remote system will kick in again and it'll continue on its next part of the journey. Land at the next connector, another time will kick in, switch everything off, 10 or 15 seconds, and then switch it all back on again, and then off it will go again. Um, so I'll set up the timers because we're just about out of time for this now. Um, but I will, what I will do is we can certainly test. We can't because the it, it will, it, yeah we need to set up the connector so that it disconnects and connects. So we'll have to do. I'm afraid you'll have to wait till the next episode to actually test it out fully. <laughs> In the meantime, what I'll do off camera is just set up the timers and get it all working properly. And I'll probably try and fix Vader as well. Poor thing. Okay, so, yep, unfortunately didn't quite manage to get it completely finished, but I think we're just about there. I'm going to remove all those waypoints though, because they are really annoying. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, we'll call it an episode there. I think we're probably just about over time now. And once again, as always, Thank you very much for watching and thank you for your support. Please press the thumbs up button if you found that useful and consider subscribing and I will see you all later.